Okay, so um, Casey will give us show us what activity and the pH meter how to use. Yes, I am. So the, like we mentioned in the class, those are two very important items for the uh, food quality. Especially in the future, if you're working in the industry, that's what you're going to measure every day for water activity and pH. So first of all, let's show them how to do the water activity because this takes time and during the waiting time we can do the uh, pH. So we're going to do two. Number one is uh, juice, distilled water and the beef. So let's do a very simple one. Let's see the distilled water. What is the uh, water activity? All right. So first things first. Um, we have these little cups to measure water activity, and do you, do you all know what water activity is a measurement of? Like, what, it, what is it measuring in a product? Kim, what is water activity? It's, uh, it's like the free water that uh, like bacteria can use for growth. Yeah, th that's fine. It's a available water can be used. What is it the good definition for that? Is the vapor pressure of the water above the product surface? Yes, yeah, so this machine kind of measures the humidity that's kind of coming off of the product. Um, so if we open this up, you see this little circular thing here? That is like the tool that does measures the humidity as it comes off of the product. So we put things in this little cup here, and you want to make sure not to fill it more than halfway so that that probe does not get dirty, contaminated with anything. And before you start anything, you want to um, kind of calibrate it. And this is a solution that we use to calibrate it. Um, and it's a set water activity. It's just a, basically a saline solution. That way we know if we need to set a curve to um, address anything with our measurements. Yeah, I will show you guys what's the best way to do. You need to make, actually you need to make a standard curve. Use a different saline solution. Because the more saline concentration in there, the lower water activity. And then we make a curve, then do a linear regression, then we do the calculation. I'll show you the beginning of next Tuesday. Okay? So, yeah. Casey, go ahead. Yeah, so there are different... Um, <coughs> salt concentrations and everything that you can use for this. There's a couple of different ones out here, but this is like the main one that is used um, for food samples and things like that. So we have our sample in. All you want to do is close it, set it, and it will do a read. Um, do you know what, oh, what level water activity for a food product is considered um, like safe or like below what level of water activity um, it's considered like where microbes can't grow or thrive or anything. Probably like 0.8, right? Yeah, 0.8 to 0.9 if you're taking consideration of bacteria and the fungi, both of them. Yeah. So we'll see. We hope it's close to, we will expect it, it's very high. So what activity will be close to 1.00. It should be, hopefully if this yeah. machine is working properly. Yeah. Now, by the way, that machine is expensive. That cost about five to six thousand dollars. There is an older version which when I was a student it's about like two to three thousand dollars. It's expensive, it's not cheap. Um, and first thing you want to do when you're always measuring pH is so, to... Yeah, she's going to talk about the pH right now. So yeah. since we are, we, we are waiting. Yes, always so is calibration, the first thing. Yes. Um, and for this we do a three point calibration. So we do a pH of 7, which is like normal pH, um, acidic, which is pH of 4, and basic, which is a pH of 10, to create, again, that curve. Um, and then after you do that, then you can measure the pH of basically anything. And again, these are color-coded to make like a lot easier. And you can measure the pH of anything. Um, it doesn't matter if it's a liquid, a solid. Um, it could be like a jelly. Because if it's something like this, like a hot dog, you can just blend it up and deionize distilled water. Because that has a very neutral pH and it will not since it's deionized distilled. 
it doesn't have any effect on pH of a product. So, um, say you have to test the pH of a beef jerky stick. You can just blend it up in water, and that because you can't just stick the pH probe, this type of pH probe, on a beef jerky stick, and it won't give you any, any results. So you just blend it up in like distilled water, and that will be that. So let's do a first example. After we do the, the calibration, let's measure the pH of the juice. And when you're calibrating these probes, um, for the most part, unless it's something specific. Okay. Okay. So this there we go. We go close a little bit. Yeah. So our water activity for just distilled water is done. So if you want to come up here and look at it. Um, it's giving a water activity of 0.9886, so that is very close to one. Yeah. And that is what it should be because it is water. Yeah. It should have a very high water activity. But be careful, this is not the final number. This is a measured number. So we, st scientifically, we have to do a calibration. It's a linear, mo linear uh, regressional model to do it. So I'll show you how to do it. Yep. Yeah. So when you're done, you can just open it up. Yeah, you can open it up. And I want to, uh, KC, since we had a, 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 a orange juice, let's also measure the water activity of, of orange juice. Put that in and wait while yeah, we are yeah. celebrating. So, you guys can guess. What do you think is the water activity of the orange juice compared to water? Tim, it's lower or higher? I'd say it's lower. Yes, why? Yeah, there's no purity. There is an ingredient. So, they will be in interacted with the water molecule. So the vapor pressure up the, the food, up the surface will be lower. Good. And another key thing when you're measuring water activity and pH is you want to make sure your samples are um, as close to room temperature as possible because temperature has a big effect on pH. Yes. So if it's um, higher or lower than room temperature, do you have to adjust for those types of things um, mm -hmm. depending on what you're measuring? So it's good to have everything as close to room temperature as possible. So I calibrate this. I hope it doesn't take a while because this thing has not been used that much in a long time. Probably one one keep one. I want to form my another another class. Okay. Uh, we can just I can just stick this pack in the freezer so they stay. Yeah, yeah, yeah they stay. Um. I have a four students, so it's five hot dogs. That's good. You have to buy it again. So how are we gonna do that one? That's we have to cut it into small pieces. Yeah. So when you're doing more activity and <coughs> stuff like that, like I said, for pH you want to blend it up um, and. For water activity, you also want to cut it up. You don't have to blend it. Obviously, when you're doing water activity, you don't want to add water to this because it's going <coughs> to throw off your measurements, and that would be counterintuitive. So what you want to do is just cut it up into tiny, tiny pieces, and then kind of la layer the bottom of these dishes with your product. So Casey is like cutting it into very small pieces. And you have to cover the bottom as much as you can, but you don't cannot be go too high. Yep. The edge of the the, uh, the length of the edge and the, <coughs> the height of this you cannot be go too high. Okay. Now I believe Casey has been did this a uh, maybe more than ten times during the master degrees of thesis. For measuring the fatty acids per products, you know. Yes. So we're going and we're waiting on that. Just layer this in here. Uh, 
also important to not get it up on the sides like I just did. If you do that, just transfer it to a new cup. Yeah. And also, you, if you're doing the research, you can't be down this. Just put it in the room temperature forever. Because when it's dried out, it's going to be also low. You sh and so, Tim, you're going to do sometimes something in the chicken meat, probably. We'll see. <clears throat> I'm gonna grab yeah. I'm not sure the feeds where you're doing the research is good for measuring what activity sometimes. Probably needed a wussy. I've done it a couple of times. I know I use the one out there. I yeah. Just water and water and water. Yeah. <laughs> So we are still waiting that juice because the temperature is low. Yeah. So that's why it takes a while, this thing. So now it's starting to read once they. Yeah, start to read. When you show, see it's going to zero, 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 zero degrees Celsius. That means it starts to read it. But they take a while. Now, the new machine taking a long time. The older machine actually is a little bit quicker, you know, but the older machine, you have to do a lot of standards, which means you have to do, go from 0 0.2 all the way to close to 1.0, which is making by different salt and the ma sodium magnesium, all those different concentrations. samples just prepare to like do something else while you're running water activity um, because I've sat in here for like three hours before just <coughs> just transferring cups one after the other just transferring cups blending up samples it's very boring so if you have other things to do that is but it's an inv a very important tool for food safety. We've done everything from breads, pickles, uh, cauliflower, um, pepperoni rolls, barbecue sauces, hot sauces. Um, we've done a lot of things uh, for the well, Dr. Shen knows kind of the, the small businesses, the small farms, and um, local producers throughout the state. Um, they used to send all of their products here to get approval to sell it on the farmers markets and things like that. They would have to get approval, or um, or if it was like a super acidic food. Then okay, oh. what is the number for that? You see, that number is lower. That is zero point. 9792 at 23.1 degrees Celsius. So, Casey, we all can go ahead to do the uh, hot dog. Yep. So, the pure water here we measure 0 0.9885, since the juice is 0 0.978, so that's lower. All right, okay, so we're gonna do, do a hot dog. So, can you guess what's the number for the hot dog? It's gonna be lower or higher? Yeah, it's a little bit lower, but still very high because uh, pathogen related to that is Listeria monocytogenes. It's still, uh, think it's a risk product. So it's a good vehicle for Listeria monocytogenes to grow. Yeah. Can I get in here and see if Sure. I'm just kind of making a hot dog slurry right now. Yeah, so let's see the measure of the pH of the hot dog. Now hot dog we also call it a high fat and a high salt products. So fat is higher, uh, close to like 10%. Salt is also higher. Now you must add a salt during the preparation because the coagulation of the protein. If you don't add a salt there, it will be not like that. Another ingredient is sodium nitrate. So that's also called curing products. That's for to prevent clostridium, the clostridium bottle lining all those. 
But there's lots of we can talk, and also they add ingredients. If you saw the label, there's a sodium diacetate and a potassium lactate there. That's antimicrobials for prevent and listeria most of the Because Because listeria is. Okay, so let's move to. Our feed from television. Yeah, so already. let's see them. So now we're going to put it in orange juice. Orange juice, what's the number? You're going to expect that it's acid. And another thing about the pH probe is you want to be very delicate with it. The bottom has like a glass dome um, and that is very fragile. And if you break it, then it, the probe doesn't work anymore. And they, depending on the type of model you are using, it can be very expensive to fix or replace. Um, so you just want to be very gentle and not like slam it down into anything or press it. Um, because even if it, you don't even want to use like a regular paper towel, you always want to use Kim wipes. So you, even if you scratch it, it can throw off the readings. All right, I think it is reading. It is reading almost stable, not yet. Slowly step on down. Do you know what pH measures? Do you know what pH, like, like what it means to be acidic or basic? The hydrogen atom. Okay, yeah, the concentration of hydrogen versus what would be basic. Think of like, um, I'm trying to think of a, a basic solution that would Okay. It's kind of like the opposite of hydrogen when you're thinking of any sort of like hydrogen plus this makes water. <laughs> oh, oxygen? Well, oxygen like uh, uh, OH. Oh, okay, yeah. Hydroxide. Yeah. Okay. So, what's the number? 4.19. Yes. It's very acid. Okay. Yeah. So, let's do the last one. Let's do the. Um, uh, hot dog. Let's see the hot dog. What's the pH looks like? Now remember, you're gonna ring rings between the some point and some. Now the meter usually you have to calculate it daily. You can't just calculate it once using like two months. You have to calculate it. Yeah, it is important. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's different. Um, also, it's important to rinse your probe between each use between products, just so you don't transfer anything to each other. To, that would alter the pH. So there's no recalibrating in between, it's just okay. rinsing it off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just rinse it and like wipe it off with the Kim wipe. Um. Okay, so this is a hot dog. If you look at the hot dog, the so water activity is 0 0.9581. So that's lower, but it's still very high. And those numbers don't seem like a big difference, but they can be a difference when you're talking about bacteria. Yeah. Because so some bacteria won't grow at 9.9 .9 or, or 0 0.99, 0 0.95, or 0.90. So it doesn't seem like a lot of a difference, but it does <laughs> but matter. It is. It doesn't matter. Let's say beef jerky. Can you guess? It's going to be much lower. 0 0.91. Summer sausage, or those are like dairy products. Fermented products is lower. So let's see the pH value. All right, the pH of the hot dog is increased a little bit. So okay. let's see if it stabilizes this. Seems like it is. Yeah, it's six point. So six point one zero. That's for the hot dog. Okay, so that's pretty much all I have today. So we show you what activity in the pH, you're gonna use them all the time. That's for our end of our first uh, lab practice. Then we have time, next time we will do this texture analyzer, right there. Okay, uh, one more thing is color meter. Okay, so we're gonna ask you the last question. How we measure <coughs> moisture? Tim, how we measure moisture amount of a chicken meat? 
Can you guess and can you tell me? You know, give me a hint, it's very easy. <clears throat> you need dry matter, right? Yeah, how to do it? Oh, um, wait, put it. Got the <coughs> over, it's about 16, 17 hours in the oven, it's 105 C. Very good. Overnight. So we are putting an oven, it's more than 100 to 105 C overnight. We will be wait, weigh the weight of the meat before and after the oven, after the drying, heating. Then we will know the moisture. Very good. Well, of course, there is some fashion facility. You can just put in, plug in to see the moisture in like a couple of seconds. But the best way to do is what you said. Okay, very good. Okay, that's what we have for today. And thanks, Casey, for demonstrating the water activity and the pH meter. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Yeah, of course.